All right, I am uh, recording this review session for um, so you can refer back to it. Um, it will also be posted on uh, YouTube. Um, before I do the Heparin protocol, because that's the first time you guys are seeing um, that this semester, um, there are two workup questions that will help out with um, answering and getting to question 25. And then that way, I at least wanted to show it to you. So that way, when I show it to you again with the heparin protocol, you can be like, oh, OK, I can see where um, where you got that information from. So so question 22 and 23 deal with converting milliliters per hour to or I'm sorry, units per hour to milliliters per hour, which is something you'll do within the heparin protocol. So I want to show you uh, how to do that and um, and then that should help out with the flow of the heparin protocol. And then we'll go ahead and dive into the heparin protocol. Um, if you don't know already, I've worked through the heparin protocol a number of times um, over the years. It's usually the same heparin protocol. Sometimes I explain it a little bit differently, um, depending on, I guess, how my mind was working on that particular review. So if you ever want to go into the YouTube um, videos for 220, 230, or 240, um, those are the ones where you'd find the heparin protocol. Um, and then you can see it a couple different ways. I also, on previous semesters, I went through different like weights um, because that's really the only thing that can change in the heparin protocol is what the patient's weight is in kilograms. And then we just solve it from there. So let me get into um, 22 and 23 and uh, show you how I would go about solving these. And then that'll help out with organization for um, the heparin protocol. Um, so 22 starts off with telling you that you have an order of 0.45% normal saline, 1000 milliliters IV. And within that IV, it has 25,000 units of heparin. And then you have an infusion rate of 1,000 units per hour. But it wants to know what to program into the infusion pump in milliliters per hour, because that's how you would set your infusion pump. So that's 22. And then I'm also going to write out the information for 23. 0.9% sodium chloride, 500 milliliters. It contains insulin 500 units and it's infusing at 10 units per hour and again how many milliliters per hour well, like i said this number 22 is going to be relative to and and um helpful for when we get to the heparin protocol which i'll do next so when converting units per hour to milliliters per hour, start with your flow rate in question. So I would write this out by writing 1,000 units per hour. And then I would go through the process of converting units per hour to milliliters per hour using dimensional analysis. And I'll show you another way if dimensional analysis is not your thing. And what I would do is I would say, OK, well, I don't want units but I do want milliliters. I have this IV solution with uh, in milliliters that contains 25,000 units. And this is what you're gonna be using as you're available. 1,000 milliliters, 25,000 units. And then you'll just plug that into your calculator. 1,000 times 1,000 divided by 25,000, and you'll get 40 milliliters per hour. If you prefer, and most people do, if you prefer, we can do a variation of this where it's very similar to the ordered over half, where you write your 1,000 units per hour over your available of 25,000 units times B 
the 1000 ml. If you do it that way, what I've written up here, you'll get to the same answer, 40 milliliters per hour. But some um, working with nursing students over the years, I know that some prefer to see it look like this, which very which looks very close to the ordered over half setup. So it will work for that if you do it that way. I'm going to show you the same thing here, but with the insulin. So I'm going to follow the same protocol. Um, I'm actually going to do this setup first, and then I'll reverse it and do the, the um, dimensional analysis version. So I'm going to start off with my units per hour, 10 units per hour, over my available, which is the 500 units, times my quantity, which is the 500 milliliters. And when I do that, I'm going to get 10 milliliters per hour. If I'm going to do this dimensional analysis wise, uh, I'm going to take my 10 units per hour times my 500 units or 500 milliliters over 500 units. And then again, I'll get the same answer 10 milliliters per hour. A lot of times it's really just a matter of organization. So as long as you're organizing your questions correctly and you're getting the right answer every time, you're doing it right. So there's no one right way to answer these types of questions. You just might have a preferred way. All right. So those are good workup setups for the heparin protocol. So I'm going to go back to the shared screen for the heparin protocol. See if it's saved. Good. All right. So on here, I highlighted some of the important stuff associated with the heparin protocol. I highlighted what the initial, uh, what it initially says about the heparin protocol to bolus the patient with heparin 80 units per kilogram body weight and then start a drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. Obviously, we need to know the patient's weight. This is the thing that will change depending on. Um, your, uh, or, you know, the question that you'll get on your, on your test. And obviously in the real world, what your, you know, patient's weight is, that'll be the thing that changes. Um, and so you can practice this and say like, okay, what would it be for somebody who is 96 pounds, 154 pounds, 237 pounds, you can practice this just using different weights. Um, it, the steps here, and I know this is new, but steps one through 15 are just what you would see associated with what is known as the heparin protocol. So if you do a Google search for heparin protocol, you're going to see these steps listed as they are here. I highlighted what's important, and I crossed out the things you don't need to worry about for the math portion of the heparin protocol. You do not need to fill in. So when you answer this question on your test, um, next week, you won't be answer. You don't need to answer these questions about the CBC or the GAIAC stool or the neurochecks. Those are important clinically, but for the math components, you're not answering those questions. Okay. So step two of the protocol actually states what you have available. You have heparin, twenty five thousand units and two hundred fifty milliliters half normal saline. So that's your available IV for your flow rate. And then you have a bolus dosage strength of 1,000 units per milliliter. So you have that um, as a known. Step 10 repeats what it says in the protocol to bolus the patient with 80 units per kilogram, and then to start a drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. Steps 11 through 15 are related to after you check the patient's APTT. You're going to see what the time is you're going to look at the different ranges and then you're gonna choose you know, the range and then you're going to proceed with um, doing what it says to do. So if it tells you to rebolus, if it tells you to increase your infusion rate, decrease your infusion rate, you just follow the protocol. Now saying that, how do I even know what I'm supposed to do with this information? 
what the at the bottom of the um, the protocol are the questions. And maybe these questions should have been asked towards the top. And maybe at some point I'll re redo this so it's a little bit more straightforward. But it tells you to answer the following questions. There's a part A, a part B, and then there's a C1, C2, C part one, C part two. On your test that you'll be taking next week, this will be one of your questions. This one question has two parts, a part A and a part B, or a part C1 and a part C2. You'll have two questions to answer, but it'll only count as one question. So if you miss both parts, which you won't after I show you how to do this, but if you miss both parts, you've only missed one question, okay? If you miss one part, then you've missed one question. So you need to get them both right to get the one question correct. But anyways, that's how this is broken up. I wrote this out like this to give you extra practice. So that way you can practice this version and this version within the same question. But on the on the actual test, you'd only get two of the four two of the four parts of this question. Hope that makes sense. So it says to answer the following questions: calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus, and I'll show you how to do that. Then it says to calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour for the IV drip, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So. We're going to start off with our patient's weight is 110 pounds. Patient's weight is 110 pounds. We're going to convert that to kilograms by dividing by 2.2. I'm going to get 50 kilograms. So step one, convert the patient's weight into from pounds to kilograms. And then if you go back to the protocol, you can see where it even tells you that. It says step one, weight in kilograms. Step two, now I need to answer the question. How, calculate the number of milliliters to administer for the bolus. So we're going to do a bolus calculation. How do I start? Well, it says, it tells me to bolus with 80 units per kilogram. So for part A, I'm going to take my patient's weight, 50 kilograms, times the 80 units per kilogram. That comes out to 4,000 units. If it just said how many units to administer um, for the bolus, then we would be done, but it doesn't say that. It asks, it asks us to calculate the milliliters. So I need to know how to convert units of the heparin into milliliters of the heparin. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the protocol and I'm gonna look at what I have available. I have available Heparin, 25,000 units of 250 milliliters, half normal saline, but that's my IV. That's for my flow rate. That's what I'm infusing on a regular basis. I want to know the bolus, the one-time injection. The bolus dosage strength is the 1,000 units per milliliter. So I'm going to use that information. You might set this up differently, but this is how I set it up. 1,000 units per milliliter. If you wanted to do 4,000 units divided by 1,000 units times the one milliliter, we're, we're both doing the same thing. And you're going to get a final answer for your initial bolus dose of four milliliters. How will this question change? Well, the patient's weight will change. And I, I, get, I alluded to that before I started talking here, is that the patient might weigh you know, 98 pounds. The patient might weigh 198 pounds. Then you would get your kilograms. I recommend that when you get your kilograms, if it doesn't end in a perfect number, if it's a decimal number, round to the nearest 10th, and then do your calculations. And then whatever your final answer is, 
round to the nearest tenth. Part B. The next thing it says. One second. The next thing it says is to calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour for the heparin IV drip. So in order to do that, I need to know, well, what do I start? And this, I'm going to start with 18 units per kilogram per hour. So same patient, same weight. But this time, we're going to multiply by the 18 units per kilogram per hour. And I'm going to get 900 units per hour. Now you're see, now you hopefully you're looking at that and saying like, oh, units per hour. And then the next thing we're going to do is convert it to milliliters per hour. It's the exact same setup as question 22 and 23. And so you're going to follow the same procedure. You're going to look at what you have available. So go back to the protocol. I have a heparin, 25,000 units and 250 milliliters, half normal saline. So those are the numbers I'm going to use to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. 25,000 units, 250 milliliters. Alternatively, you can write this out as 900 units per hour over the 25,000 units times 250. You'll get the same answer, which is nine milliliters per hour. So that's how you set up. And then for the most part, and from what I've um, seen, on previous semesters tests is that you'll likely see this scenario. You'll see just the answer part A and part B. I have seen on some of the um, makeup tests where they have you do C um, part one and C part two. So I'm gonna show you those as well, but I just wanted you to know um, for the most part, if you can do A and B and you can do it consistently, you're, 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 you should be good to go. Um, the things that are consistent is you're always multiplying your patient's weight by 80 and then dividing that number by 1,000. For part B, you're multiplying the patient's weight by 18 and then multiplying by 250 and divided by 25,000. And that seems to be the consistent things associated at least with the initial portion of the heparin protocol. All right. For part C, it says after six hours, patient has an APTT of 43 seconds. And then it asks you to calculate if needed the new bolus and then what you would set the new infusion rate to. So 43 seconds fits in here in step 12 of the protocol, which is why I highlighted it. If it was 30 seconds, you'd look at step 11. If it was 50 seconds, you would look at step 13. If it was 80 seconds, you would look at step 14. If it was 100 seconds, you would look at step 15. So you have an idea of where to look. And you know half of this is just figuring out where to find the information. So it tells you to do two things. Um, since the APTT is at 43 seconds, it tells you to rebolus with 40 units per kilogram and then to increase the rate by two units per kilogram per hour. What was the initial rate? The initial rate was 18 units per kilogram per hour. Now we're going up two units per kilogram per hour. So our new infusion rate would be 20 units per kilogram per hour. So let's look at our bolus. So we're gonna use the same patient, same patient weight, but our new bolus is 40 units instead of 80. Okay. If you're looking at this, well, isn't, isn't 40 half of 80? Would my answer just be two milliliters? And I'd say you're on the right track and that would be correct. But 
We'll still write out the information. Notice that I used the same bolus dose strength of 1,000 units per milliliter because that's the only thing you have available. There's no, there's no new information listed in there about your bolus dosage strength or your heparin in the half normal saline, your IV that's available. Those two stay the same, so you just work with the same information. For C2, I'm gonna do the same thing, same patient, 50 kilograms. Remember it said to increase by two units per kilogram per hour. So now we're gonna write 20 units per kilogram per hour. That'll give me 1000 units per hour. And then I would just divide by 25,000 units multiply by the 250 ml because that's what I have available. And then my answer would be now 10 milliliters per hour. When I first was trying to tackle and figure out how to answer this question, I, I knew that we could go from four to two because it was half, but then I made the mistake of saying, oh, okay, I'm going to increase by two. So I went from nine, I'm going to go to 11. And then when I saw that the answer to that was wrong, I realized, oh, can't do that. I need to um, take a step back and realize that we weren't increasing by two milliliters per hour. We're increasing by two units per kilogram per hour. And then that's how you would set, set that up. So that's the heparin protocol. Um, some caveats. If you have a number with a decimal, at least for the test, go ahead and round it to the nearest tenth. So you can have answers like 4.5, 9.3, 2.8, and 10.6. Those could potentially be answers, especially if you have a um, patient's weight that is like a 50.45, you're going to have um, a decimal weight. And, um, and I do still recommend that once you get the patient's weight, round it to the nearest tenth, then do your calculations. Hopefully you don't have to round to the nearest tenth twice, um, but if you do, then, then you do. So, any questions on any of that? Any additional questions? Yeah, so those are what I've pretty much been um, going over with the 220, 230. Um, I, uh, I will, I'm going to be here with your section again this after or this evening around five o'clock. Um, if you don't have any other questions, then that's pretty much, you know, if you can do the practice test, you should be fine with all this. But if you have any other questions, just um, let me know. Is everything the same? as it's been in past semesters besides this heparin protocol? Yeah, I mean, uh, and then there was the converting units to hours. So okay. like if you can do all the questions on the practice test, it should look very similar. Um, you know, obviously the numbers will be different, medications, things like that, but it's the same format, like um, 25 questions, you can miss two, um, remember your rounding rules, um, but the practice test is a pretty good um, mirror of what you should see next week. Gotcha. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.